Your plant and garden questions answered. Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is standing by. The number is 270-9933. And we are waiting for some calls to clear, so we'll get to those in a minute. Hi, Lisa. Hello, how are you guys today? Right. You know, we had a call on the noon show the other day. People worried about the ice and the snow on the plants. Is it safe to get, you know, if the, like an arborvita or evergreen if they're being weighted down by all this? Snow is usually fine, especially the things that are low, because it acts as a great blanket. If it's landing on, say, arborvitae or plants that are prone to split, I would get, like, the business end of a broom and kind of go up with it and knock some of that heavier snow off. You don't want to smash down, but you want to use an upward motion. And a broom or a plastic rake will work really well. You want to just be gentle with it. As far as the ice is concerned, there's not a whole lot you can do about it because it's heavy. We were lucky over the weekend that we had that warm weather and all the ice melted before it got super windy. Lisa, I have a question for you. I, I, I'm trying sure. to, to get plants back into my house, um, and I was starting with a succulent because I heard that those are really hard to kill, but apparently I'm doing a good <laughs> job um, not keeping them alive. So is, are you not supposed to water them that often, right? That's what, that's what the beauty of succulents are, right? Well, the thing with succulents is that they like really, really high light, way higher light than most people think, and they also like temperatures to be a little bit on the cooler side, which is sort of contrary to what you might think. And then the watering, though, is really key. I always say that for the diameter of the pot, like this is like a six inch pot, mm -hmm. you want to wait about a week to 10 days between watering for every inch, especially at this time of year, Plants are super dormant and they're not really utilizing very much water or nutrients or anything like that that's in the soil. So if you're watering your succulent and it's a nice size and you're giving it, you know, soaking it down every mm -hmm. couple weeks, you're overwatering. Ah. Yeah, I think most people overwater. That's probably my I think more problem. people are overwaters than underwaters. If you put your finger in the soil mm -hmm. with a succulent or any kind of cactus, you want to feel that it's dry you know, down pretty deep. You want it to dry thoroughly between watering. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's go to the phones. We'll start with Ellie from Madison. Hi, Ellie. What's your question? Well, I had a Swedish ivy I called about a long time ago, and it died. And there was a lot of fruit flies, or they looked like fruit flies around the dirt, even okay. though I had just good soil. So you want well, without it? seeing the flies, it could be a couple of things. It could be fungus gnats, which are just feeding on material in the soil that's breaking down. And you'll see a lot of those at this time of year. The other thing it could have been would be white fly, which is a sort of a piercing, sucking insect that's going to do some damage. So if you start noticing insects around your plants, get a systemic insecticide. Um, and that's a good idea for house plants in general this time of year. Now is the time where you're going to start seeing problems that maybe came in the house after the summer kind of start to build up and populations will get out of control. So you just want to get like a little um, uh, systemic insecticide capsule. You can put it right in the soil. The number of them will be based on the size of the plant, and that will take care of a lot of those insect house plant issues. But the bugs didn't kill the plant. It depends on what kind of bugs she had. Mm. If they were fungus gnats, no. If they were white flies, yes. It could have been at least a cause. Okay. Uh, who's on Who's on line one here? I can't see. Let's see. We that's because the car no. the lilac. No, go to this one here. Okay, Shanta from Madison. Hi, what's your question? I um I had a good plant like a couple ago. The flowers fell off. I was wondering okay. if, it, if it's dead or if it's going to grow back the flowers. What kind of plant was it? Yeah. Uh, orchid. Or oh, an orchid. Oh, an orchid? No, orchids will not reflower on that space. I'm just going to turn here and grab one. So this is a moth orchid or Phalaenopsis, and this is probably the most common flowers as far as orchids. So you'll see, like, there are all these little individual flowers on this stem. And once these fall off, they won't reflower on this part. But if you cut it back to the next there's like there's a little swollen node here and you cut it just above that a lot of times a new flower stem will come from this place and give you another set of flowers okay once you're done with that then you just are going to take that all the way back to the base of the plant 
and then depending on how you're fertilizing it, what kind of lighting it is, Phalaenopsis are really easy to get to re-spike. And those flowers so, last forever, too. Just, They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. All right, Lisa, well, we're out of time. Thank you, everyone, for calling in. We'll get to your questions next time. Lisa, thank you. We'll have a final check, You're of, your very welcome. Final check of your forecast coming up.